Hey, we live. <sighs> Let's see if we're live. All right, all right, we're live, sweet. Let me update the title here and share it on Facebook. We'll get this party started. And where's the link? Hold on, let's see if it comes up here. All right, turn right. All right, so is people starting to roll in here. Sorry, a couple minutes late there. Had a crotch fruit situation I had to deal with. But we are about ready to rock. I'm going to go right here. And I'm going to share this on Clarence. All right. But we are about ready to rock. That's too loud. I am going to go. We live. All right, let's do it, folks. Here we go. Alright, Turtle, 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 what's up, Turtle Riders? Welcome to uh, this episode of Uncle Turtle Boy's Late Night Garage Podcast. This is brought to you by our good friends over at Garage Doors Plus and Quincy. If you have one of those old, rickety garage doors, folks, we need to get out of the car, walk over the door, unlock it, open it up like your Fred Flintstone. It's time to get with the times. Call our friends at Garage Doors Plus and Quincy. My buddy Chris is going to come over that day. He's going to give you a price that is so reasonable and so fair, especially if you mentioned that the turtle sent you, uh, that you're going to have no choice but to hire him. He's going to come over with his guys that day. They're going to install a whole system there, right? And at the end of the day, you're going to get a nice little clicker. You're going to press the clicker. Garage door is going to go up. Boom. Garage door goes down. So... Call our good friends up at Garage Doors Plus in Quincy. You can find them online at gdplus.com. They have a stellar reputation. They do business all over New England, pretty much anywhere but Coleraine. Uh, so give them a call uh, because this is the number one way to support Turtle Boy, obviously, to support our advertisers. Um, they do great work over there. Also, if you'd like to support us, we uh, always take donations. Uh, I met with my lawyer today for the first time. Uh, from the uh, Jennifer Azadnia case, which is just, oh my God, that case gives me so much stress, man. It's like, that guy is evil, George Leontire, just pure evil what he does. Like, uh, this is his MO. He, George Leontire's goal has always been to drive me out of business by just basically drowning us in ridiculous discovery and other nonsense 
and it gets really expensive and his plan is to just bankrupt us that way. I mean, it's pure evil. So we can't survive without your contributions. I greatly appreciate it or get something in the Turtle Boy store. I think there's a link in the comments. There's a lot of ways to support us. Uh, if you know business owners that would like to advertise with us, that's another way. You can get the $10 ad-free subscription. There's a billion and one day ways to support Turtle Boy. All right, we cannot do it without you, so we greatly, uh, greatly appreciate your help. All right, so let's get this party started, shall we? Um, first thing up on the agenda I'd like to talk about tonight is uh, uh, the whole debacle with the new Greg Hill show. All right, so... A little background with this. I, I, I like Greg Hill. I've always liked Greg Hill. Uh, I've always liked the Hillman show on WA. But when Kirk kind of replaced John Dennis on there, Kirk realized, like, you can talk about sports with the rest of them. Anybody can talk about sports. With a sport, let's be honest. Sports gets boring, right? There's only so much you can talk about when it comes to sports. But after a while, you're just kind of pretending to be mad about nothing. Right? How mad can you be about the Red Sox bullpen? How mad can you be about the freaking Bruins fourth line? You can't. I mean, it's ultimately sports at the end of the day. So he understands this doesn't turn the needle. Minion was really good at ratings, right? So he talks about other shit, right? What's in the news? What's Trump saying? Or better yet, what's going on in the Boston Globe? Calling out those frauds. It was like music to our ears to finally hear that shit, right? Finally hear people calling out, uh, you know, like Ke the Kevin Cullen expose of him being a serial plagiarist and a serial liar about being at the Boston Marathon bombing, amongst other things, was Kirk Minahan's greatest work, all right? But he's also gotten a lot of trouble there. He got suspended a few years ago because he called Aaron Andrews a gutless bitch. He took his suspension uh, and he got kicked off of uh, cable news for that. Uh, they no longer started broadcasting after that. But, you know, I mean, that's what happens when you push the needle. Sometimes you say controversial shit, big deal. Anyway, uh, Minahan keeps going on there, and he kind of like keeps kind of messing with the wrong people, if you will. And that's what I liked about him, and that's what he's got the turtle boy spirit in him, right? For instance, he doesn't do what corporate bosses tell him to do, like neuter him, silence him, self-censor him, etc. He talks about shit you're not supposed to. Like going after the Boston Globe, you're not supposed to do that, but he did it anyway. He went after uh, who, he went after the Red Sox pretty hard, and this is where ultimately we're going to get to it. It gets him in trouble, right? The Red Sox of our four major sports franchises are the most politically correct franchise. They just are, right? The uh, the guy that owns John Henry owns them, and he also owns the Boston Globe, and that's a problem because then the Boston Globe effectively becomes you know Boston Red Sox media. How can you criticize a team if the paper owns it? You know what I mean? It, it, it's a pretty big problem that a lot of people aren't reporting on. Obviously, the Globe's not going to report on it because they own the freaking Red Sox, right? So, anyway, back to that. Um, and eventually, Kirk got taken down by three a three-headed monster. First was Bob Murchison. We know about him. He's the activist from Sherborne that relentlessly harassed all of WE's at WEI's advertisers. Then you add Shirley Leung over at the Boston Globe, who is perhaps the whiniest, most, uh, it's almost like she's a caricature of herself. Like in the last 48 hours, uh, she has done two articles. Today she did an article uh, about how uh, the Boston Herald celebrating Chinese food, I'll get to that later, is somehow racist. And... 48 hours ago, she did a column entitled, "Is Cra Does Craft Beer Have a Diversity Problem? Because there's too many white people drinking craft beer. This is the Boston Globe writing these articles. This woman uh, fancies herself an editor and a journalist, but she's really just an activist. She used to harass all WEI's advertisers. Asked them, you know, why are you advertising with such a uh, inappropriate show, etc. It was just absurd. Anyway, the third and probably the strongest force that drove Minahan out is Sam Kennedy from the Boston Red Sox. All right. Minahan specifically is called uh, <laughs> John Henry, right? We've all seen creepy John Henry. He's the weirdest looking guy. He's a thousand years old. And his wife is Linda Pizzuti, uh, who works for the, Bo I think she works for the Globe. Now, I don't know what her capacity is there. 
but she's a hot woman, 30 years his junior. And it's very obvious what's going on here. I'm being sued for saying something similar to this. In that, <laughs> uh, I would just make the suggestion that Linda Bazzuti is not sexually attracted to John Henry. It just seems odd, because he's old and decrepit, and she's young and hot. And this would seem that if he did not have money, I can't imagine she'd be, you know, having sex with him. See, uh, just, just a guess. And what do we call people who have sex with somebody and get financial benefits in return? I forget the word, guys. I forget the word. Because if I say the word, I might get sued for defamation. Because this is happening in real life, to make that, you know, hyperbolic comparison. Anyway, Minahan has called uh, them gutless and, you know, made the same kind of insinuations that I just made. And as a result of that, and the controversy that uh, WEI has brought along with him on there, uh, the Red Sox have kind of fought back, right? And the Red Sox are the only Boston sports team that still broadcasts on EEI. They lost the Celtics about two years ago. So 98-5 has the Celtics, the Bruins, and the Patriots, right? So the WA is clinging on to the Red Sox. And they have the most games, so it's pretty valuable. You don't want to lose them, right? So Sam Kennedy is the president of the Red Sox, Mr. Politically Correct. And we all know the Red Sox have changed the name of Yawkey Way because it's allegedly racist and all this shit. And this is what Sam Kennedy uh, said in February of 2018. Just because I'm going to bring this up. He's going to lie about this today. He says that um, he appeared on the Kirk and Callahan show this morning and discussed the statement he made to the Boston Herald about the growing level of concern with WEEI. Uh-oh. He said that, uh, he, told the, he told the Herald, we've had a growing level of concern and we've expressed that very clearly to their management, especially over the past year and in the past week and in the past few days. So he's saying, I own the Red Sox, Right. We're just, you know, a business partner of yours. I don't control the shots here. But I have a problem with the things that your people are saying on there. Right? He says, this pattern of controversial incidents is exhausting. I think for listeners and fans in general, it's something that Entercom, WEI's parent company, is smart to address. So he's basically saying here, right, Shirley Leung and the folks at the Boston Globe and Bob Murchison called up the Red Sox offices. And they said, why are you uh, partnering with this, you know, hateful uh, radio station that allows free speech? It's awful. It's, we can't be having that. And because he's a gutless coward, he then goes uh, to the Boston Herald and tells them, mm, I don't like this. I have to go on record to saying I don't like this very much. He says, it's, an, it's a relationship we've enjoyed for 20 years. We've had a terrific partnership. We've been on different stations, right? They've spent time with the Jimmy Fund. They've raised all this money, blah, 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 blah. And then he goes on to say, however, that doesn't mean for one second that as an organization, we get frustrated from time to time with our partners. Whether it's WEI or another partner, and we feel free to speak up when we're disappointed, right? And he says, when the line gets crossed and you have people in our front office, whether it's employees or players or members of the coaching staff, members of ownership upset, memberships of owner upset, who could it be talking about there? Oh, right. John Henry and Linda Bazzuti, right? And so they're coming to the president of the team and they're saying, what's going on with WEI? You need to fucking lay the smack down on them. They can't be saying mean things about me and my trophy wife. God forbid. God forbid. Uh, frustrated with the way things happen. We feel that we have an obligation and a duty to talk to you guys, to talk to management. Uh, so anyway... Bottom line here is that this is obvious what's going on here. He's acting like they don't control the content on WEI, but they clearly do because they have them by the balls, right? If the Red Sox leave WEI, WEI is going to lose a shit ton of money. They cannot afford to, they're, they're tanking in the ratings right now. They cannot afford to lose them. Now, WEI is what your parent, your dad and your uncle grew up with. Right, and your grandfather, they grew, it was the only sports talk radio station. And then 98.5 came along 10 years ago, and they started blowing them out of the water. And that's where Minnie's upset, Shirley Long's upset, and Bob Murchison's upset, the three headed monster. So, they get rid of Minahan, and the ratings start going down. 
So they decide that this is Jerry Callahan's fault. He's been there for like 20 years, and he's a fan favorite. He's a crotchety old conservative guy, but he's interesting. Whether or not you agree with him, he's interesting. I would rather listen to Trenny and Tomasi, who are hardcore liberals, right? I would rather listen to them than listen to just a generic radio show that didn't wasn't controversial, right? I like, I like controversy. People are attracted and drawn to controversy. That's what we like, right? We can get milk toast crap anywhere on cable TV. And even if it's like, you know, I, li I, I listen to Bill Maher, right? I, I'll listen to freaking Tomasi, whatever. I don't have to agree with them, but at least it's interesting. See you know what I'm saying? So, this has, uh, they decide they're going to get rid of Callahan. And who are they going to bring in? Greg Hill. Now, Greg Hill, years ago, invited me on his show. So I'll always be grateful for that. It was like late 2015, I want to say. There was an incident in Foxborough involving a high school student in an American flag. He, he reads Turtle Boy. He followed us, and he messaged me on Twitter back when I was loud on Twitter and said, Hey, come into the studio tomorrow. We'll have you on. So I did. And it was nice. I met him all. It was cool. Anyway, uh, he's got a little niche over there at WAF. They have like a, It's like a... When Kirk and Callahan are boring me, which they did sometimes, I'll admit it, uh, I would go and listen to them. I'll listen to them over Touch on a Rich, who I just find freaking unbearable. I, I don't want to hear about all Van Halen, your favorite Van Halen songs, and make references to fucking 80s rock bands like they always do. It, they're, they're, they're terrible. Terrible. So I listen to AF. And they have like an interesting dynamic with Danielle and LB and, uh, you know, whoever else was on that day, right? And it worked. Now they've decided to move Hillman to EEI, which is a sports talk radio station. And it's been going on for four days now. And it is honestly the worst radio I've ever heard in my entire life. Now, this is not a knock on Greg Hill, right? Greg Hill is just a company man. He's literally doing what Entercom tells him to do. Entercom has decided that, oh, we know how to revive the station. We're just a general manager or something like that. They're not radio people, right? That's not why they're famous, right? I can't, whenever Tom Brady does an interview, I, I fucking immediately turn. I have no interest in listening to a Tom Brady interview whatsoever. And Felger and Maz, they used to have Cam Neely on. I, it's, Cam Neely talks. Like a machine. Like it's like like a really fucking boring machine. No personality whatsoever. Just turn it off. So they had Wick Grossbeck from the Celtics on the other day. It was freaking dreadful. Then today, they have on uh, Sam Kennedy from the Red Sox. And I'm going to play a couple clips for you to show you what, how bad the world is without interesting people in it. Now, he's, a, he's got Danielle with him. And he's also got this guy Fitzy. You guys might have been familiar with Fitzy. He kind of went viral. He became famous a few years ago uh, because he used to make these Patriots videos, like pretending to be, uh, a, a, you know, a typical New England fan. It was funny. He had a little shtick. But this is a disaster, this show. And it's nothing against Hillman or Danielle or any of them. The f it's just a terrible, terrible mix. So I'm going to play a couple clips for you so you can see just how truly bad this is. All right, here we go. All right, come on. Let's see what people are saying in the meantime. Well, this fucking loads. What the hell's happening there? Come on, load, damn it. Which one is it? Yeah, this one we want. Okay, we want this one. A lot of us lost money on this, on whether Sam was going to show up or not this morning. Um, and it is our pleasure nah, to have the president and CEO of the Boston Red Sox. Are we going Instagram Live? Um, I, I'll, go, I'll go Instagram Live, my Instagram. Um, the new gig and yeah, with the program director of WEI, <laughs> Sam Kennedy. <laughs> So they're making, they're making joke. Get it? Ha 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 The program director of WEI, Sam Kennedy. Ha ha ha. Get it? Because Kirk Minahan. 
is calling him the program director, so it's funny. We're mocking him. Here we go. How are you? Uh, I'm doing great, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Congratulations on the new uh, the new gig, and thanks for approving us. I know there was a lengthy review process yeah. on whether or not you would approve us for the radio station. Uh, uh, yeah, let me tell you something. If I were program director of WEEI, you'd be uh, all Pearl Jam all the time. <laughs> wow. 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 So relatable. Kind of, uh, so relatable. You and Theo. You and Theo. Yeah. 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 Um, Spice, I mean, the, uh, I'll get there. I want to talk, obviously, about yesterday, but um, just just real quick. The, 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 this, uh, this theory floats around that the Red Sox control the content yeah. on this radio station. Do you have any? Do you have any comment on that? Yeah, I know there's a uh, a narrative out there that um, that we have influence over the content, and you know, I've said it before. You say it till you're blue in the face. I mean, our our contract with Entercom is limited to control over the game uh, broadcast. So that's it. To the extent that there's talent decisions made in game, uh, pre game Red Sox coverage, Red Sox do have approval rights uh, over the, that talent. But with respect to other day parts of the radio station, that is exclusive within the control of management here uh, at Entercom, at WEEI, and uh, we, we got enough uh, problems of our... Okay, so the talent, he's saying, is completely up to WEI. yet here he is in February of 2018 on WEI, clearly saying that the people on there are saying things that make him uncomfortable and he's thinking about leaving, okay? So he's just lying to you. Now, if this was a good show, Minahan or Callahan would bring this up, right? That's what you want in entertainment. If you get the guy on there, you want to ask them the tough questions, the real questions. This isn't tickle my balls time, except it is now. It is. That's what WEI has become. Tickle my balls. So here we go. Our own. <laughs> So uh, we, we, we focus on the, the business of the Red Sox, and uh, yeah, we have absolutely nothing to do with uh, who's on the air, who's not on the air. Those are business decisions. We want Entercom, Boston, and, and WEI to be uh, successful. We're business partners. I mean, no, totally. Entercom pays the Red Sox a, a you got rid of the right top guy. We're grateful. Maybe not after this game. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the, the radio business has been through some uh, trials and You know it's fucked up. You know you have a shitty show us, uh, when you uh, have to, like, fake laugh like that. It's just so not genuine. Here, There's nothing that upsets Henry, me Tom more Turner, listening to the radio than the fake laugh. <laughs> Sam Kennedy, funny guy. Long after we're gone uh, as a partner oh, of the club. So uh, we do not have any influence over uh, right. the talent uh, throughout the radio station. Uh, but we do wish the station well, want them to be successful. Uh, and we do share a lot of mutual sponsors and advertisers, which fuel this uh, this industry. So uh, we work together with a lot of the advertisers oh, uh, on our team, True Park. Oh, God. Um, so nothing listen. done yesterday. So the time is um, a trade deadline. I'm not going to play too what much. What kind of a message do you think that sends to players, to fans? Um, and and about tell us a little deadline. bit about uh, why nothing happened. Yeah, well, it was a uh, it was a long, you know, it's obviously not just a day, it's really uh, a few weeks, really, when you start getting into the, the trading deadline window. And um, we were fortunate enough to make a deal uh, for Andrew Kasher to bring him in to try and fortify that rotation, take some pressure off the bullpen. So that deal got done early. Um, and there was Sorry, a desire to try Cash to do something yeah, definitely. to be really clear, uh, the shit fundamental here. issue really interesting in, shit. in baseball, and every club faces this, is yeah, the uh, short-term, the long-term voice. Uh, inherent conflict, and uh, we face it. Other oh, good Lord. Face it. He just... And yesterday at the deadline... Uh, there is there anything more... Like, this is what the world sounds like. Does anybody want to hear this fucking crazy. multi-millionaire day, talk about the Sox, how the Red Sox didn't trade for anyone at the deadline? Does anybody give a shit? Red Sox. Like, job, honestly, my job, uh, I don't give a shit. Sure I don't want to... All I know is the Red Sox didn't trade for anyone. I don't want to know why. I don't need to hear this guy's bullshit. Right? I have my, I'd rather just hear other people fucking talk about it, right? Or don't talk about sports because so it's fucking really boring. The part of the job so, when you have to make this let me get to the good part here. Done. And so uh, over 18 years uh, at ownership, edict that John and, and not uh, giving away too much for the future. We don't want to no, just no, try and win a World Series. In, I want to get to the part here where it's like they start talking about the White House. Hold on. Uh, I'm one of those, you know, I hate it when mom and dad fight kind of types, uh, just from the way I okay, grew up. Here we go. And so this is Fitzy. 
Let's do it. So we wanted to stay consistent. We wanted to give the players okay. the opportunity to go the front, the front office ownership. And I'll tell you what, I don't care what your politics are. The opportunity to go to the White House uh, to have that honor is a, a once in a life. No matter who's sitting there, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, matter who's there. And we had a, an incredible day. Um, the players that went enjoyed it immensely. Their families went, uh, and we don't regret going for for one minute. A lot of great burgers from McDonald's. <laughs> We didn't eat. I was I was oh. hungry to throw up no, the entire food. No food. No food. No food. No food. Um, so, all right. I'll, oh. I'll take the sword. I'm one of those, you know, I hate it when mom and dad fight kind of types, uh, just from the way I grew up. And this past season, we saw that the Celtics faced a little bit of a PR nightmare Ooh. or some frustrations with Ooh. the Kyrie Irving situation and some perceived uh, no, infighting and then a disappointing it. season now. You said thus it? far, the season's a little bit disappointing. Is he going to do it? And there could be an issue that fans oh are God. upset about some of the infighting Don't that's taken place Don't do vis-a-vis it. what happened with Dennis Eckersley, who's a fan favorite, and David Price, who helped pitch oh. the team to a World he, Series last year. We know he's got all the he cards. Internally, do you guys try to, or at least he holds them or says he does, <laughs> Do you guys have discussions or have you guys addressed this so that we can, we the fans can hear less drama about what's taking place oh my with God. beloved pitchers and wow. former pitchers and analysts and can just focus on the game Holy because I know you guys don't want to head into an off season guys. where you have to continue Holy addressing matters that shouldn't shit. be impacted. He went there. He went there. He was not supposed to ask about that, guys. He said that earlier on. He said he's going to fall on the sword, okay? He's going to go off on a ledge. And he's going to ask the question nobody is supposed to ask. What is up with the David Price, Dennis Eckersley beef? Okay? I know, I know. Edgy, edgy shit. We're not supposed to ask about that. But here we are. I mean, Jesus. That's what they have to pretend is like edgy. That's what they have to pretend is like, we're pushing boundaries here on this new show. Nothing's off limits. Shut the hell up. I mean, it's embarrassing. I feel bad for them because there's no way they can actually think that this is, like, edgy. They're literally just... Fuck, I mean, they're just collecting checks at this point. This is goddamn pathetic. This is what a PC world looks like. This goddamn awful audio that you heard today on WEI. This is what the Boston Globe and social justice warriors in general want you to be able to consume as a consumer. Right? You should be able to listen to anything you want. Kirk and Callahan were top for a reason. But the fun police had to come along and say, nope, it's not enough that I, I don't like it. And I can just change the channel. I don't want you to like have anything that you like either. So I'm going to force feed you this goddamn fucking train wreck that is Sam Kennedy on WEI. And you're going to like it. And you're going to listen to Fitzy's edgy questions about David Price and Dennis Eckersley. What will he say next? I don't know. It's just that crazy of a program, guys. Jesus freaking Christ. What a freaking joke. I mean, this is just such an... Like, this is what they want. Like, every time they try to censor speech and try to... This is why we need offensive speech, guys. This is why we need, quote-unquote, hate speech, which isn't real. It, they just hate it, Okay. I don't want racist speech or anything like that. I like edgy speech. I like interesting, okay? That's all. Just give me something interesting. You know what's interesting? If they had asked them, don't you think you were kind of pandering when you changed the name to Yaki Way? What's up with that? How many? How come everybody, you guys seem to care about diversity so much, but everybody in upper management here is white? What's up with that? How come you don't diversify your own organization? Okay? You tell me that. Good Lord. This is the most boring, tasteless world, and it, it's what the future holds in the radio, guys, which is why independent media like Turtle Boy, and honestly, I've shit on Barstool plenty, right? But Kirk Minahan has made Barstool great again. He has. Like, I don't... I, I, li- I, I listen to his podcast every day now just because he makes fun of this. It's, it's much more entertaining to listen to him shit on this than it is to actually... Listen to that. It's fucking awful. Right? We all heard it. It's goddamn awful. So that's the future if social justice warriors uh, lead the way. How is that? So people are saying, Unk, that's being a social justice warrior, though. Uh, I'd like to hear why. Um, Maybe I can come back to that. But, um, yeah. Anyway, 
Let's talk about uh, last night's debate, uh, last two nights' debate. I don't know what you people thought about that, but I got some quick thoughts. I did a live blog on each one. Uh, I thought the winners, right, uh, definitely, and you know I'm leading this train, right? The Trump supporters for Pocahontas train. That's Massachusetts, you get to vote as an independent in whatever primary you want. There is no Republican primary. I'm going to vote in the Democrat one because I can sabotage it, right? We've been over this before. So I'm going to vote for Pocahontas because I think she has the worst odds against Trump. Plus, it would be the most entertaining. I think we can all agree on that. Whether or not you like either of them, it would be the most entertaining by far. So uh, she's got a real shot. There's like four people, right, that have like a real shot. You got um, her. You got um, obviously Biden. You got Kamala Harris. You got Bernie Sanders. And if you want to say maybe you can add on to their... Um, Pitt, Mayor Pete, right? I don't think Cory Booker is a real candidate. Some of these other clowns, Kirsten Gillibrand, some of these people are just terrible. I thought Elizabeth Warren, right, did quote unquote well in the debate. And by well, that doesn't mean I agree with anything she has to say. It just means she had some good zingers and some good one liners. Her debate was interesting because. It was all white people. It was all the white people. They called the white debate. And they had a, like four or five guys in there. It was like the bald guy from King of the Hill, Tim Ryan, Hickenlooper, the governor of Montana, a bunch of guys who, whose main point was we can win. We can beat Donald Trump. We just can't be fucking crazy, which is 100% true, right? They're all from Midwestern states or Trump supporting states, so they all know. Like, if you want to win in my state of Ohio or Michigan or Wisconsin or Montana or whatever, you can't be talking about fucking free health care for illegal immigrant transgenders, right? You can't be talking about, can, 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 are, are, is the government going to pay for transgender abortions? You can't be doing that. Stop. So they made that clear. And Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders were basically like, no, we can do whatever we want. Throw my hands in the air and yell revolution. So that's all you have to do to appease Democrats and go up in the bulls. She will go up because that's exactly what she did. Um, I think she's just a younger, younger, like fucking, she's like 69, uh, youthful version of Bernie Sanders, right? Uh, and she is going to get the nomination when this is all said and done. It's probably going to be her, and it's going to be fantastic. On the other side, last night's debate was the much better one you because you had Biden on there, and Biden got his ass whooped last time. Last debate... Kamala Harris just called him a racist a bunch of times, and he didn't know what the hell to do. And Joe Biden is the most polite debater ever. I've never seen someone adhere to the rules more than Joe Biden. I can't tell you how many times Joe Biden got up there, and it was he was talking, and then he's just like, my time is up. He just stops. Whenever they cut him off, he fucking stops. Everybody else just keeps talking. They got to tell him a few times. It's just what you do. Joe Biden just stops. Low energy. But I will give him this. They came at him last night again with the same old bullshit. Like it was like nine on one. Everyone was going after Biden. And every this time he had some good he had some good wine liners, man. He zinged them back. It was like he was ready for it. He looked a lot more confident. Looked a lot more confident. The big loser last night. The big loser was the big winner from the last debate. That's everyone's favorite cop, Kamala Harris. She came out of nowhere last debate. This time, I've never seen somebody come across as more shrill and unlikable than Kamala Harris did. And she got ripped apart by perhaps the hottest person to ever run for president, and that would be Tulsi Gabbard, a.k.a. Bay. All right? Tulsi Gabbard is fantastic. Luckily, she has no chance of getting the nomination, so I would never be in that choice where I'd have to make a decision. I'd still vote for Trump anyway. But... Her and Andrew Yang had great debates yesterday. Those are the only two Democrats that I really like. And I liked her because she fucking... First of all, she's a veteran. So she's got like more street cred when it comes to foreign policy. She's an anti-interventionist. And she's, she wants, she's suing Google, which fucking... Like, I love you. Right? I love you so much. Thank you for doing that. She doesn't believe in tech censorship. Like, she speaks my language. And she gets on here last night. That's not the one. Uh, and she just murders Kamala Harris. You have to watch this if you did not see it already. We're going to watch it together right 
as soon as I pull this video up. Where's it? There it is. Let's watch this one. <laughs> what the hell was that? You guys hear someone scream? Bring the conversation back to the broken criminal justice system that is disproportionately negatively impacting black and brown people all across this country today. Now, Senator Harris says she's Blakey. proud of her record as a prosecutor and that she'll be a prosecutor president, but I'm deeply concerned about this record. Ooh. There are too many examples to cite, but she put over 1,500 people in jail for marijuana violations Ooh. and then laughed about it when she was asked if she ever smoked marijuana. She blocked evidence, <laughs> she blocked evidence that would have freed an innocent man from death row oh, until the courts forced her to do so. Oh. She kept people in prison beyond their sentences to Ooh. use them as cheap labor for the state Ooh. of California. And she fought to Not keep good. cash Got bail gone. system in place that impacts poor people in the worst kind of way. Thank you, Congresswoman. Uh, Senator Harris. Ooh. Ooh. What you got? What you got? As the elected Attorney General of California, I did the work of significantly reforming the criminal justice system of a state of 40 million people, yeah, uh, which became a national model for the work that needs to be done. And I am proud of that work. Yeah. And I am proud of making a decision to not just give fancy speeches or be in a legislative body and give speeches on the floor, but actually doing the work oh, yeah. of being in the position to use the power that I had oh, to yeah. reform a system that is badly in need of reform. Oh, God. So, just to show you how freaking... Now, that was awesome, right? Uh, that was awesome because uh, I just... I kind of love how, like, on the Democrat side, the worst thing you can possibly be is somebody who enforces the law. There's, no, there's nothing they hate more than that. So, this chick, like, her Achilles heel is she's a prosecutor. But they're not lying. She wasn't lying with, like, all that weed shit. Like, she did, and I didn't even think of that. I remember they did an interview, her and they asked her, like, do you smoke pot? And she laughed, and it's like... Yeah, but you put people in jail for pot. It's pretty fucked up, right? Like, how can you act like you're like a reformer? You're full of shit. I mean, and just the way she came across is afterward. Like, how dare you? Okay, who are you? Miss Hawaii, Tulsi Gabbard, who are you? Now watch this. Did you, did you expect that uh, from Tulsi Gabbard? Uh, had, had you had interaction about that in the past? And how do you think it went? Well, I mean, listen, I... Well, listen, listen, this listen. is going to sound immodest, but I'm obviously a top-tier candidate, obviously and top -tier so I candidate. did expect that I would be on the stage and take hits tonight, yeah. because there are a lot of people that are trying to make the stage for the next debate. Yeah, it's you, for a lot of them, it's do or die. Well, yeah, and especially when people are at zero or one percent or whatever she might be at. And I mean, so what a I fucking cunt. What a miserable bitch. Right? That's all that is. No, especially, she's only coming at me because she's at one percent. This is Trump talk, by the way. This is the exact shit Trump used to say about, like, Jeb. Remember that? Yeah. Pfft. Jeb. I'll leave it. Yeah. Jeb. I'm at 41%. You're at 2. Okay? So, that's about that's about the end of that. It's like, no, you're Like, these people, they claim to hate Trump. They model themselves after him. So, she, I mean, she, I don't, she just came across as so shrill and unlikable. Right? Just what a terrible person. She was clearly flustered by that. She couldn't get to Biden. And it was a disaster, man. And meanwhile, Pocahontas is in the JV debate with old man Bernie and all the moderates, and her poll numbers are rising, okay? And that's why she's going to be the candidate. She's gonna, she gets to finally go at Sleepy Joe in the next debate. Trust me, Pocahontas is going to win the nomination, and it's going to be fantastic because it's going to be eight years of Donald Trump, okay? Now, the real winner, right, of the debate, this was my favorite line by far, the worst person in politics today, by far. The only person worse than uh, Elizabeth Warren in the United States Senate is New York Senator Kirsten Gillibrand. We all knew a Kirsten Gillibrand in high school. She's such a Kirsten, too. Right? Uh, she was probably, you know, she was the chick that ran the yearbook in the prom committee, and it had to be her way. That's Kirsten Gillibrand, in a nutshell. She is obnoxious. She is just... Uh, so unlikable that I don't understand how she got to where she is in the first place. So, she explained last night, and I could not stop laughing at this. This is the stupidest thing I've ever heard, and it was great, and it's, 
she's, you know, she's somewhat famous, and she's at less than 1%, so I don't even understand why she's in this race. But she's so desperate, and they asked her last night, if you are the candidate, how are you going to beat Trump? And this was her answer. It was spectacular. Listen to this. I think as a white woman of privilege who is a U.S. senator running for president of the United States, it is also my responsibility to lift up those voices that aren't being listened to. Okay, stop that. <laughs> oh, white privilege. Oh, I can't say. I mean, maybe she actually is white privilege. Uh, if that's if there's a real thing as white privilege, it's her. But there's not a thing as white privilege. She has privileges because she's rich. That's the matter of the fact, right? And <laughs> white privilege. It's so silly. It's such a silly concept, right? This idea that you have privileges because of the color of your skin is such friggin' nonsense, right? Uh, it's pretty simple, really. Obey the law, right? Do well in school, and you'll have privileges. That's it. That's all there is. Or come from money. Then you'll have lots of privileges. That's the most important privilege you can have is wealth socioeconomic privilege this idea that like white trash in west virginia have privilege is just I, so laughable i can't get over it if white privilege was a real thing then rachel dolezal never would have pretended to be black she completely destroyed the myth of white privilege why would anybody try to be a member of a group that is oppressed when they could be a member of the group they naturally are which is privileged it doesn't make any freaking sense unless of course you live in a country right in which it pays to be a member of a quote-unquote marginalized or victimized class so where is she going with this she says that she is going to speak directly to white women this is her 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 specialty this is how she's going to beat donald trump she is a way of speaking to white women that nobody else does listen also my responsibility to lift up those voices that aren't being listened to. And I can talk to those white women in the suburbs that voted for Trump and explain to them what white privilege actually is. That when their son is walking down a street with a bag of M&Ms in his pocket, wearing a hoodie, his whiteness is what protects him from not being shot. Oh, my God. Oh, God, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> I can't. I can't. She's a real person, right? This happened. Like <laughs> the plan to beat Donald Trump in order to take back those states like Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. The problem is white suburban women voted for Donald Trump, right? So how are you going to convince them not to vote for Donald Trump? Oh, here's the plan. I'm going to go and I'm going to lecture them about how their sons have white privilege. This is what she thinks is a freaking selling point. Like, she honestly believes that. See, this is genuine laughter. This is like, this isn't me laughing at, oh, Sam Kennedy, you're so funny. This is fucking hilarious. This woman. <laughs> I just, I'm trying to picture it, guys. Can you picture this happening? She's talking to some freaking white trash family from Wisconsin, right? That makes $30,000 a year. Like Stephen Avery's freaking clan. <laughs> they got a freaking Trump sign in their yard. And she's going to go in there with her pearls on and her pantsuit. <laughs> and she's going to be like, hey guys, I'm here to talk to you about white privilege. And like, I don't know if you know this, but your son, uh, if he walks down the street with Skittles in his pocket, he's totally not going to die because of his whiteness. I don't know if you know that. But we learned this in university, okay? I went to university. Oh, good Lord. You cannot make this stuff up. It is so good. Like, obviously that's a reference to Trayvon Martin. Uh, Trayvon Martin did not die because he had Skittles in his pocket. Trayvon Martin died because he had the unfortunate luck to cross paths with a psychopath, George Zimmerman, a wannabe cop who was, let's face it, looking for a fight, who basically ambushed Trayvon Martin, then Trayvon Martin kicked the shit out of him, because he's bigger and stronger and more athletic than George Zimmerman, George Zimmerman lost the fight, and so he shot him, because Florida lets you do that, right, you can start a fight with somebody, punch first, and then lose, and then shoot them, 
That's why Trayvon Martin's there. Not because of white privilege, but because he had the unfortunate luck of running into psychopath George Zimmerman. A complete piece of shit, by the way. That is one I will not defend. Trayvon Martin was an actual, like, travesty, right? That was an actual miscarriage of justice, what happened. That's Florida justice. Casey Anthony got fucking off in the same state. But George Zimmerman's not a cop. A lot of people associate that with the Black Lives Matter movement. But George Zimmerman's not a cop. He's not trained. He has no idea what the fuck he's doing. So, anyway, let me just play the rest of this. When your child has a car that breaks down and he knocks on someone's door for help, and the door opens and the help is given, right. it's his whiteness that protects That's him from being shot. Right. That is I, a mean, white I mean, seriously. Seriously. Your car breaks down. Your son's car breaks down. He goes up on the door, knocks on it, and he doesn't get shot because he's white. <laughs> Her understanding of what it mean, what it's like to be black in this country, where does she get it from? Like she, she obviously doesn't know any black people. She has no black people in her circles. Everything she learned knows about black people, she read about on the Huffington Post. That's all it comes down to. That like, did you know that when black people and their cars get, um, you know, they break down and they have to knock on someone's door, they get shot. That happens, like, in real life, because they don't have privilege. Unbelievable. The privilege in America is today. And so my responsibility is to not only lift up those stories, but explain to communities across America, like I did in Youngstown, yeah. Ohio, yeah. to a young mother, that this is all of our yeah. responsibilities, and that together we can make our community stronger. Yeah, definitely. Definitely people in Youngstown, Ohio, want to be lectured by Kirsten Gillibrand about white freaking privilege. Unbelievable, folks. Unbelievable. So that that she's not a real candidate for president, but she embodies the spirit of her party, right? If you asked every candidate running for president on the Democratic side, do you believe white privilege is a real thing? I'm pretty sure almost everybody except for maybe Yang and maybe Tulsi, I don't know, would say yes. White privilege is a real thing. So anyway. Yeah, a lot of people are saying they didn't get notifications. What's up with that? Fucking YouTube, huh? Good thing Tulsi's suing Google. So anyway, why don't we take some questions? Any questions you guys have, I will answer them as best I can. Shoot them away. Uh, and I will answer as many as I can. Give me five minutes, yeah. Where are these candidates' husbands? <laughs> hey, that's misogynistic, Savvy Bear. But she actually said last night, Kirsten Gillibrand, that she's also, the, she, in her home, she is the primary breadwinner and the primary caregiver. Which means her father, or her husband, masturbates to internet porn all day and doesn't work. That's what it sounds like. So, um, did I miss talking about the cop block chuds? We talked about them earlier in the week. Your wild card topic, there is no wild, wild card topic means like, you know, questions, whatever. Whatever you guys want to talk about in the last five minutes, any questions you have. Who's the most annoying candidate? Kirsten Gillibrand's the most annoying candidate, easily. She's the most, per uh, actually, actually, Bill de Blasio's up there too, and Julian Castro. And I'll say this about Bill de Blasio, and I wrote this in the blog last night. Bill de Blasio is a walking commercial for why... We need an electoral college. That guy is such a joke and so bad at his job. But he got elected to be the mayor of the biggest city in North America, or the biggest city in the United States of America. I think Mexico City is bigger. They chose him, right? If we got rid of the electoral college, our elections would center around cities. And cities are filled with stupid people who think Bill de Blasio should be doing anything besides setting pins at the bowling alley. So he's up there too. Um, other questions. Is Constantino still posting your blog and telling you to stop harassing him? I, I have no idea. I haven't had time to follow that one. How do you feel about NFL players holding out during the training camp? Now they do it every year. Pretty common. I love when running backs do it because they never get paid. Running back, like Ezekiel Elliott's doing that right now. Um, Levy and Bell did it all last year. I hate to break it to you, running backs. 
but you're not worth shit. <laughs> like you, you have five year shelf lives at most, and you're really easily replaceable. Like the Steelers can go out and just put in James Conner and not miss a beat. So that's how I feel about that. I, the only people that should be holding out in, in training camps are defensive defensive backs. And, you know, major playmakers, guys who make sacks, and quarterbacks. That's it. If, you, if you're any one of those and holding out, you're a douche. Uh, what else are we asking here? Um, we lost a Kennedy grandkid to an OD tonight. Shocking. I saw that. Um, what else are people asking? Uh, Failure Swift. Yeah, so Failure Swift's a big letdown, guys. She has now that I got the ACLU on my team, she's disappeared. So fuck her. Big disappointment. What do I think of Delaney? I mean, he's just another guy up there. He's a centrist. He has no shot at winning. Um Gabbard versus Crenshaw in 2020. Uh maybe. I don't. Crenshaw could be eventually down the line for the Republicans. Tulsi Gabbard ain't going nowhere in her party. She's too normal. And God, she, we all agree she's hot, right? Like it's not just me. Like she's sexy, man. She got it going on. I'm a big. T Oof. Uh, the best line of the night was when Biden accidentally endorsed. Yeah, that that was funny too. Uh, what's up with the homeless guy and his mom living in a car? You've read the blogs. He's a freaking absolute pathetic low life loser. That's all that guy is. And he is a, the poster child for why it's, I would never advise anyone to own property as well. Uh, what else are people asking? Yeah, Patriots, exactly. Prove that. Put in any running back. Doesn't matter who you put in there. What do you make of OJ's Twitter? I love OJ's Twitter. If you're not on Twitter, and I'm not on, but I still go on. Follow OJ Simpson right now on Twitter. Just not because he's that interesting, but because every time OJ tweets, let's go to his Twitter right now. Every time OJ Simpson tweets, the OJ Simpson, not a Jew. Did the Red Sox lose again tonight? I see Xander's trending. Did he hit a home run? Okay. So here's OJ. What's he saying here? And that Yang and oh. Gabbard are the only two who know how to follow the rules of this debate. OJ likes rules. <laughs> I'm just saying. Okay. Hey, Twitter world. So let's, let's check out the replies. Let's check out the replies to this. This should be good. So he's talking about the rules of the debate. He's just saying. Thought you were in jail clothes. <laughs> somebody's like, somebody's like, uh, you can't even vote, dude. Uh, let's see. Like if you stabbed someone to death before. It's just all jokes about stabbing. Is it just me or did O.J. Simpson just win his way back into the hearts and minds of thousands of Americans? Welcome to the Yang Gang. Yeah. Um, O.J. <laughs> O.J., me and my wife aren't getting along lately. Any advice? <laughs> Glad to see you cutting through the bullshit instead of your wife and her side, dude. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Nobody knows the law or rules like the juice. <laughs> Yang Gang picks up his first killer endorsement. Proud of you for taking a stab at social media. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Follow OJ Simpson on Twitter and you will not be disappointed just because of the replies. They're too priceless. Too priceless. Um. Oh, we got Bill's Mafia in the house. Shout out to Bill's Mafia. I don't know how Bill's Mafia is going to be this year. Probably more of the same, unfortunately, for Bill's Mafia. Um, but he had two home runs. Did we win? Oh, we got pummeled. It was four to three last I saw. Wow. Fucking, they're, you know what's annoying about the Red Sox? They're wasting fucking career years from Xander, Go Xander and Raphael Devers. Remember when Raphael Devers was kind of a bust? They're just blowing, like, career years for those two. Because they can't fucking pitch. Good God. Yeah. 
Do you think they moved Greg Hill to WEI to cut salary at WAF? No. They moved, w -E they moved him because he's uh, non-controversial. They want that show that you heard today. They don't seem to care about money. I'm sure they paid Greg Hill plenty. Who's worse, Kirsten or Sharks? Hmm. What would I rather do? It's a good one. I would say I would say Kirsten slightly, um, slightly, but we we can't get rid of Kirsten Gillibrand. We can get rid of the sharks. That's the problem, and we choose not to. But that that run really made me think. Uh, the weekend show should be Saturday, but I'll get back to you. Yeah. So anyway, uh, why don't we call it a night then, guys? Uh, it's getting kind of late, and uh, we will see you all. This weekend, uh, for the live show, maybe we'll have a guest, maybe we won't. We'll see what happens. All right? Peace, Total Riders.